Uh, good to see you. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a <clears throat> pretty interesting week, <laughs> to say the least. A uh, lot of fear, I think. Didn't really see it as fear in the beginning, I must admit. Um, but a lot of thoughts um, in my mind. And it's interesting what I came to was um, <clears throat> it's often here we get given areas and we do projects and stuff. And I thought, why does it always bring up so much for me? A new area. And it's like, I think it like reminds me of like school or something, like there's a project to be done. And I hated school. I was useless at school. <laughs> I didn't understand what was being asked of me. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> it, it seemed quite simple, but something in my mind was not clicking in. <laughs> so I was just like, I don't understand these, these seeming simple things to do. So you just get labelled as being stupid. He's, he's just stupid. He just don't get it. And so that was the kind of label that went all the way through. So it was just like, OK, rebel, <laughs> do what I wanted to do. Um, not too much pressure, so there's a kind of flip side to all of that. Um, and it was interesting because I, I trained as a psychotherapist, so I thought school meant all the stupid people had it the worst and all the intelligent people had it the easiest. <clears throat> and in my time as a psychotherapist, I got all these people that were really great at school telling me, you don't know how hard it was for me. I had all this pressure put on me. I couldn't go out in the evenings. I had to study. And if it weren't my parents putting pressure on me, it was then when I went to school. And I was just like, wow, you were having it pretty tough. So it was like, these ideas that we have about ourselves, these victim stories, oh, I was the only one. Oh, I was at the bottom of the school. Oh, I was terrible. Um, that everybody has their own <laughs> their own uh, perception of their own curriculum of what was going on. So I was like, wow, I didn't really have it too bad, really. I never had homework to do because they knew we wouldn't do it. <laughs> so there was no point in asking for that. Um, and every evening I was out doing what I wanted, playing on my bike and stuff. So to be honest, school probably wasn't actually that bad for me because uh, I just didn't get it. But yeah, of course, those thoughts of being stupid or whatever carried, on, carried along for, they, st they still carry along. So we often get these projects, as I said, and it really, really just takes me out of my comfort zone of things that I shied away from, that it was either <clears throat> seemingly in the form I was told or it, he's never going to amount to anything. The best he can hope for is changing tyres on cars. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so when a project comes in and it's really out of my comfort zone, I can kind of see it now, no wonder it like, it's like the tremor of the past, I'm just going to be shamed, I'm going to feel guilty, I'm going to feel embarrassed. So it feels like, and I've got this kind of filter that comes up that just says, you, you can't do it, you're just not good enough, you're not clever enough to do it, you're not going to understand it. And then this fog comes over me, and then I, it's like I'm back in those times, and it's like I'm not understanding what's asked of me. And then I don't even know what to ask, so I can understand. So it's hard to ask for support, and it's hard to know what I need support with because my mind becomes so foggy. And I was reminded of the, the film Revolver, one of the scenes in that, um, where you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. <laughs> so I can, I, I'm laughing now, I don't know what I'm laughing at, to be honest. It hasn't been funny at all. Um, so it's like I'm being put into this position of actually having to face these ideas, these, these fears that I've run away from. So all my life I've, kind of, and I think, I've put myself into this box and said, okay, this is what I can do, this is what I can't do, kind of simple. 
If you ask me to do certain things, no, that's not for me, I'm no good at it. If it's something that I can do, then yeah, I'll, I'll have a go. And it's like here, we get pushed out of this comfort zone. So I was even thinking about doing these shows. The last thing I'd ever want is to be on a camera um, talking. That would have been a massive fear for me. And now it's been um, extremely healing. In actual fact, like, I felt like this week, oh, I don't even know whether I can do the show. My head is all over the shop. I don't know what's going on. I'm forgetting things. I don't know how I could even plan a show, even think about that. This fog was just completely there. <laughs> and I thought from what had happened during the week, they were going to say, yeah, I think you should scrap doing the show this week. <laughs> and... Um, then I get asked, oh, so what are you doing for the show then? I thought, well, I thought you were going to tell me not to do the show. And somehow this morning, um, when I woke up early, I woke up very early, two o'clock, and just this fear was just there. Oh, God, what am I going to do? I've got the show. I'm not feeling good. And rather than kind of <clears throat> thinking about it, I was just letting this fear wash over me and went to sleep, woke back up about 3.40. Fear's still there, okay. What can I do? I'm not gonna analyze it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be with it. What will, what will be, will be. There were some thoughts of, what are you gonna talk about? It's been a terrible week. But somehow coming here, I don't know what it is. It's like something sort of calms me down. I feel, I feel pretty good. So it's kind of interesting that I thought that this would be, this was a very fearful thing in my mind that here I am sitting here talking to a camera. So I never would have thought that that would have been for my own best interests. So if I hadn't have pulled myself out of that comfort zone, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. So it feels like. Yeah, so it feels like there's this hurdle. Oh, I've got a face. Yeah, just these stories have just crippled me. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know a life without thinking I'm stupid. And that I can't do things. So I've been given this um, this distribution area, and it feels like I have no clue. Dealing with publishers, <laughs> sending emails. I'm not a very good writer, so. <laughs> and really, 
explaining what I want to say in written form is not my forte, to say the least. Brings up a lot of anxiety. And so now there's a lot of outside people that I talk with and I have to try and communicate with. And I guess this is what I've shied away from, <laughs> either in anger or just in a victim. I just can't, I just can't do it. And here I am again, and it just feels like so much shame. Oh, fuck. Oh. That it should be so basic. It's like in my mind, you should be able to get it. So the voice has been pretty harsh this week. Very convincing. <laughs> a friend of mine said it's like you build a case. It's like a, it's like a judge. And you build a case and you, and you make it completely real. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm no good. I know I'm no good. But yeah, here we are again, <clears throat> having to face it. But I don't know how to face it. That's the problem. I don't know what to do. And this is part of the journey. <clears throat> this is part of it, facing every, everything. So I'm facing it here now. <laughs> I'm facing it here, so <laughs> this is part of it. I mean, this would have been the worst thing in the world for me to be announcing this on camera, on YouTube, <laughs> announcing to the world how I feel. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> but I just don't want to be a prisoner to it anymore. So that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> I guess that was the fear in the, in the morning. It's like, you're going to go on here and tell the whole world if they want to see my videos <laughs> how you really feel. So that's not as bad as I thought. What does it matter? And the great thing about the spiritual path is that it's not of me. And this, this isn't true. This fear isn't true. And that's what I've been getting from, from the book, really. It's like, fear is actually meaningless. It's like, don't feel that way today. <laughs> um, And that's, 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 some that's some comfort in that. And the past few, few, few days of the lessons, if you're following along in a, in a, with them day to day, they've been about basically, no, your, your right is happiness and it's joy. And it's not fear. And it's like really this world is just set up completely in fear. And going back to my, the school story, no matter where you are on the seeming chain of intellect fitting into the system, whether you're, you're at the top, you're, you're feeling fear of failure, fear of letting your parents down, fear of letting the school down. If you're at the bottom, you know you're a failure and you're not gonna exceed in the in the system, so you succumb to that, and so you have options and just to rebel and whatever, but you feel like a failure and you, you're in fear because you look like an idiot. And then you think in the, you're in the middle, <laughs> you're not quite good enough to be in the top, 
and there's a possibility if you don't do enough, you could jump down into the bottom. So <laughs> there's the fear you could be in the bottom and there's this striving to try to be in the top. So it's like you're set up <laughs> in this great school system to build fear in your mind. <laughs> that was a really good ego thing, wasn't it? School, that was great. That was a great idea <laughs> for us all. <laughs> um, so it's like these ideas are just, just with us. So it's like no one, no one thought about going to school to be happy. No one, no one said to me, oh, school is about being happy, joyful and, and peaceful. So, oh, is it? I didn't realise that. I thought it was to be marked, to be told you're not, you got this wrong, to try and be praised if you can be good. And that was about it. But now our new curriculum is, thank God, is uh, to be peaceful, to be happy, to be joyful. And that's not even of this world. The peace and joy is not going to come from the world, but it is what you are. So I think that would be a pretty good school curriculum. <laughs> so maybe if you're in education, you might want to take this on a little bit and stop putting the pressure on because it doesn't work. So I guess that's what we're saying to the ego, your, your games don't work. We're coming to the realisation that's it's just not acceptable in the mind to think I'm an idiot. It's not acceptable to have that pressure to try and be the best in, in form. It's going nowhere, the joy is, the joy is within. This journey is an inward journey. So I think that's what, that would be a good lesson to learn. So I'm kind of grateful actually for some of it because I couldn't take it in. I didn't understand it. I'm not, in some respects, I'm not so wound into the world because I don't understand a lot of things. I'm like, okay, that's how it is. <laughs> so there was some, some good that came of it. But this morning while I was going through this, I, I stumbled across the um, fear to look within. So I thought we could, we could look at that together. So this is the fear to look within, and it's in chapter 21. There is no inconsistency in what the Holy Spirit teaches. This is the reasoning of the sane. You have perceived the ego's madness and not been made afraid because you did not choose to share in it. At times, it still deceives you. Yet in your saner moments, its ranting strikes no terror in your heart. For you have realized that all the gifts it would withdraw from you in a rage at your presumptuous wish to look within, you do not want. A few remaining trinkets still seem to shine and catch your eye, yet you would not sell hell to have them. <laughs> so I guess kind of school is one of those places. <laughs> Don't know why I'm talking about school here. It's like the ego's like, haha, I got ya. Set you up in the fear trap. Next one we've got is work, even worse doing things you don't want to do, working crap hours, crappy jobs, that, that'll, that'll get you going. <laughs> that's, what, that's what's next on the agenda. Or even go and do more school, college, university. You might even fail at that. Yeah, I'll get you, I'll bring you down. Then you've got fear of money, that'll hurt. And so, <laughs> That's what its wishes are along this little journey that, that we're seemingly going along. And as the Course is teaching, it's, it's insane to think like that. But it's sane to think 
with the spirit of who you are, with the joy and the love and the peace. <laughs> I was just thinking back to before school was like, I was really happy then. <laughs> I remember being very joyful. I loved running around. I had a lot of energy, so <laughs> I was hard to stop. No cares, no worries. There wasn't, you had to read. <laughs> I remember the first time they asked me to read, I just, I'm not interested in sitting down. I'm, I'm playing, thank you very much. And that's what I continue to do. And really that's what our life is. It is a play. There was this joy. And then slowly the ego's program came in, winding us into life. And now we're winding back out of that. And just remembering that there is a sane curriculum. Thank God. There's some truth. That we're not this. And I don't have to side with those beliefs. That there are some true beliefs. So I thought I'd just carry on. So when we side with the, with the Holy Spirit, and now the ego is afraid, yet what it hears in terror, the other, parts, the other part hears as the sweet music, the song it longed to hear since first the ego came into your mind. The ego's weakness is its strength the song of freedom, which sings the praise of another world, brings to it hope of peace. For it remembers heaven, and now it sees that heaven has come to earth at last, from which the ego's rule has kept it out so long. Heaven has come because it found a home in your relationship on earth and earth can hold no longer what has been given heaven as its own. Look gently on your brother and remember the ego's weakness is revealed in both your sight. What it would keep apart has met and joined and looks upon the ego unafraid. Little child, innocent of sin, follow in gladness the way to certainty. Be not held back by fear's insane insistence that sureness lies in doubt. This has no meaning. What matters, what matters it to you, how loudly it is proclaimed the senseless is not made meaningful by repetition and by clamour. The quiet way is open. Follow it happily and question not what must be so. So yeah, no matter how loud the ego speaks to you, roars at you, has its ideas about who you are, we don't have to listen. You can pass it by and remember that you are that love, that peace and that joy. And even when we're not feeling that inside, that's our, that's our goal up front in our mind, that that's what's being promised. And it's like this fear to look within is like, oh God, this, this darkness, this hell of who I believe I am is so treacherous that I've got to walk through it. How can I possibly get through the other side of this? And that's of course the the ego's trick, it wants you to believe that, oh, look, oh, you don't want to go in there. 
you're going to see how terrible you are. You're going to uncover all these beliefs. Oh, yeah, you've done a lot of bad things. You're not a good person. This is going to be really, really difficult. Why don't you stay with me? OK, you suffer, but yet you don't have to look at all those terrible things. You can deny them. And you can allow me to beat you up, <laughs> which you're used to. It's become normal to you. But yet, that's the, that's the trick. So of course, when we start to look within, we see all this darkness, and, it, and it's like, oh god, do I really want to do this? Well, we've gone too far now. And the actual trick is, is that's not what, that's not what is at the end of the tunnel. It's actually the light. <laughs> It's what's behind all of this. So that's, what, that's what's kept me going this week. It's like, OK, I'm not seeing the light. I'm, I'm not in the light at the moment, <laughs> let's be honest. But what's promised is the light is behind all of this. And I can actually pass this by. And remember, in what all of the lessons this, this, this week, really, have been saying, they have been a bit of my saviour every every hour for five minutes, um, love and peace abide in me. That's to help to remember. <clears throat> and the other part that was helping me remember was um, I went to the section of the teacher of God. Um, it, was, um, uh, it was, how does the teacher of God spend his day? And um, it said in there, well, when you're a teacher of God, you you don't need any structure, but while you're learning, structure is good until that can become an idol too. But at the moment, it's good to have that structure, and that's what the lessons give, a new, a new lesson every day to keep your mind on track. And in a way, that's what um, these, these shows are all about. It's like we wave off during the week and <laughs> we might go into troubled seas, but yeah, OK. We're steering the ship back around. We're heading north. <laughs> We're heading to the light <laughs> together. That's why we join in. So yeah, I, I wandered off a bit this week. My um, navigation system wasn't so hot. Um, and yet here we are again together, coming back in alignment. And the seas may get choppy, but we're in the boat together and we're moving along together. <clears throat> and no matter what, if you've ever been sailing, you know that no matter what happens, it can't be windy all the time, and you will come into calmer waters. So the calm is always, is always there, and in fact, the storm is only on the top of the surface, that if you go down deep enough, there's actually no storm. And really, that's, that's, the, that's the truth. That's what the Holy Spirit's wanting to take us, saying, go a little deeper into the mind, dive a little deeper into the sea, and you will always reach the calmer waters. And that's the same with the mind. We just have to keep diving down and facing whatever's there, and you will find calmer waters. It's as simple as that. If we stay on the surface, we're, we'll be in the choppiness of the ego. So yeah. I feel, I feel more at peace now. I don't feel so anxious. So, yeah, thank you one and all for sharing this time with me. I feel so, so grateful that I have this opportunity to sit here and be with you all. So even if you've been in choppy waters, just remember you're not on your own and they're not real. And we're going through that to the calmer waters. So, yeah. Sending you all lots of love. Yeah, thank you.